Today in our 2012 Ford van, we'll be installing the ETB C7 Brake Controller Installation Kit, part number ETB C7, in conjunction with the Deconcha P2 Brake Controller, part number 90885-3034P. First step of our install will be installing the seven pole bracket onto our new seven pole. We'll go ahead and use the hardware provided with our installation kit. We'll drop the screws through the seven pole and then secure them with the nuts on the back side and tighten them down. Next, we can then go ahead and secure the seven pole bracket directly to the bottom of the bumper using some self-tapping screws. Now, before I feed the wires over the hitch, I'm gonna go ahead and use some black electrical tape to wrap them up to help in protecting the wires and cleaning up our install look. On this application, we will not be using the purple wire, so we're gonna go ahead and cut it off now and then complete wrapping up our wires. Next, we'll go ahead and take the manufacturer's four pole, connect it into the back of the four pole of our seven pole connector. Note, I'll also be using some dielectric grease between the two connectors to help prevent corrosion over time. Next, we'll take our gray duplex cable, strip back a couple of inches, and then strip back the two wires. This will allow us to connect them to the black wire, black to black wire, and white to blue wire, coming from our seven pole connector with the pre-attached butt connectors. Now with all our wire connections made, We'll go ahead and continue wrapping up with the black electrical tape. Next, we'll take our ground wire, feed over to the frame or cross member, and use the self-tapping screw provided with our install kit to attach it. This will be the ground wire going to our seven and four pole connector. Next, we can begin by starting to route the gray duplex cable up towards the engine compartment. Now, before I go any further, I'm gonna go ahead and secure the wiring from our seven pole connector to the back of the hitch. Because of the size of this hitch, we'll be joining two zip ties together to get around the entire width of the hitch. As we feed our gray duplex cable along the inside of the frame rail, following the manufacturer's wiring, we'll use our black zip ties to secure the wiring. Note, near the cab of the vehicle, where the frame becomes boxed, we're gonna go ahead and use a pull wire, or in this case, a piece of air tubing, to feed through one of the excess holes in the frame and back out the end of the channel. Then we can take our gray duplex cable, using some black electrical tape, and attach the gray duplex cable to the pull wire. Now we can go ahead and pull our duplex cable through the box channel portion of the frame and feed it up towards the engine compartment. Note, we'll be using this grommet here to feed the white wire into the cabin of the vehicle, as our black wire will continue on up into the engine compartment. Next, I'll go ahead and use a paint marker to mark where we'll need to cut back the gray duplex cable. Now with our wire marked, we'll pull it back down where we can gain access to it and use our utility knife to slice the cable, pull it back, and then remove it. Now we'll go ahead and get into the cabin of the vehicle and locate the grommet from up top. Pulling back the liner, you can see the grommet we can take our utility nut and cut a small hole in it. This will allow us to feed our wire into the cabin of the vehicle. To make it easier to route our wire into the vehicle, we'll go ahead and take the pull wire, feed it through the grommet and down underneath the vehicle. Then we'll take the white wire and attach it to the pull wire with our black electrical tape. Next, we'll go ahead and pull it up into the cabin of the vehicle. Then I'll go ahead and remove the pull wire, attaching it to our black wire and feeding it up into the engine compartment. As you can see, our pull wire is here in the engine compartment. We're gonna route it over to the driver's side inner fender well. There, we can go ahead and leave it at this time. Now we're gonna move into the cabin of the vehicle and start making our brake controller connections. To make our brake controller connections, we'll first need to locate the manufacturer's plug. On this application, it's located behind the coin holder. So we'll need to remove this tray. Using an interior trim panel tool and a flat bladed screwdriver, we can gently pop it out of position, locate the plug, press on the locking tab of the connector and remove it. Then just below the tray, the wire is secured. We'll need to pop this plastic fastener free so that we can route the wire 
down underneath the dash where we can gain access to it. Now with a plastic push pin connector free, we'll go ahead and push the wire down and pull it out underneath the dash. We'll route down near the HVAC vent. The manufacturer's plug will match the plug that came with our brake controller. This will feed brake switch power and ground for our brake controller. We'll still need to run power wires for the blue wire, which will connect to the white wire we ran from our seven pole connector, and an additional power wire that will connect to the black wire that runs to the brake controller. Now we can take the white wire that we ran from our seven pole connector, run into the cabin of the vehicle and over to the manufacturer's plug. Where we've already gone ahead and connected the direct fit pigtail for our brake controller. Now on this application, the manufacturer's blue wire that connects to the blue wire on the brake controller pigtail is not hot or connected. So we'll need to cut the blue wire strip back one end adding a yellow butt connector and then connect the white wire to the blue wire we'll cut the wire on the brake controller pigtail side now let's go ahead and set that aside and install the brake control pocket using the screws provided with our install kit we can go ahead and secure the pocket to the dash on the driver's side below the steering wheel once we install the brake controller, it will sit in the pocket like this. To make it easier to secure the white wire to our pigtail, we'll go ahead and disconnect it, secure it with the yellow butt connector, and then reconnect it to the manufacturer's plug. Now I can go ahead and wrap up the end of the brake control pigtail with some black electrical tape to clean up the install look. Then we'll go ahead and put our brake controller in the pocket, securing it in place. For this application, the power lead to the brake controller is also not hooked up. So we'll need to run a power wire to the battery. Taking a piece of the leftover black wire from our gray duplex cable, we can feed some into the engine compartment, cut off any excess, then we'll strip back in one end, add a yellow butt connector, and then cut the black wire, again on the brake controller pigtail side, strip back the end and secure it to the yellow butt connector. Now for this application, we've run the leads for the power for the brake controller and the trailer brake power coming back out of the brake controller to our seven pole and then to our trailer. We'll still be using the manufacturer's ground and brake switch signal power. Now we'll go ahead and take a pair of side cutters, cut off any excess from our zip ties and then wrap up our wires with some black electrical tape to clean up the install look. Then we'll go ahead and reinstall the interior trim panel that we removed to get the, the manufacturer's plug, and we'll move back to the engine compartment. Here we'll need to go ahead and mount the breakers. Our power wire running from the seven pole connector will be connected to the 40 amp breaker, and the brake controller for this application, we'll be using the 20 amp breaker. We'll go ahead and secure it to the fender well here in the engine compartment on the driver's side. Once we have the breaker secured, we'll go ahead and take the power wire, run it to the breaker, and cut off any of the excess wire. Then we'll strip it back and add one of the small ring terminals. Once we secure the ring terminal, we can go ahead and attach it to the silver side of the breaker as the copper side will be for our hot lead connected directly to the battery at the positive battery post. Note as we route our wires, we'll go ahead and take some black zip ties provided with our install kit and secure the wiring out of the way. Now with the power wire secured, we're ready to go ahead and create our hot leads. We'll take the 
wire remaining from our gray duplex cable. Add ring terminals to two ends. And then secure the large ring terminals to our two hot leads. Once we install the star washer and nut, securing all our wires to the breakers, we'll go ahead and tighten them down. Note for this application, we can pick up our power at the battery post at the fuse box. We'll simply go ahead and open the fuse box cover and remove the nut from the terminal. Then take our ring terminals that we secured to the hot leads, install them onto the post and then re-secure it with the nut. Once we have that secured, we'll go ahead and close the cover on the fuse panel. Now I'll go ahead and finish securing my wires and then we'll cut off the excess with zip ties with a pair of side cutters to clean up our install look. And that does it for the install of the Takancha Prodigy P2 brake controller, part number 90885 in conjunction with our brake control install kit, part number ETBC7 on our 2012 Ford van.